good morning and welcome to the U3A Improving Photography Group Meeting for August. As you know, this is the first of two sessions we're having this month, the second being our trip to London, being arranged by Diana. Thank you, Diana, for arranging that. Uh, please remember to give Diana the £7 train fare today so that she can book ahead. OK, now you will remember that last month our challenge was landscape, and the worthy winner of that challenge was... Iris. So well done again, Iris, for that fabulous shot. Now let's have a quick look at that photo and just remind ourselves of the picture. Let's look again at those clouds. Look at the reflection in the water. Look at the three boats. Look at the contrast. I think if David were here, he would have chosen the same picture, don't you? Which I think shows how much we've learnt in being able to spot a winning shot. So well done to us as well. So let's crack on now with the slideshow. If you've given me your score sheets already, thank you. If not, do feel free to mark each photo during the slide presentation. At the end of this presentation, there will be a short video which we might find useful during our trip to London. Enjoy.
You know, you're absolutely right that you hear an awful lot of horror stories about photographers being asked to, you know, stop shooting or delete images or, or even hand over their memory cards. Well, I'm going to take a little walk around today to do some street and architectural photography, and I'm interested to see if I get stopped. Right in front of the building, because it's not 
coming in and out. When yeah. you um, take pictures, people are coming in and out. I think that, I think, I don't know, it's against the person being ready from upstairs. But what's the purpose of this uh, picture? Uh, I was just wondering, are we on public land? Or is this no, private? No, 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 this is a uh, public land. Public, yeah. okay. But no, I'm talking about the building, but at the same time, uh, so you can enjoy it right in front, inside the building. Oh, yeah, well, I was just taking a picture of the gates and the uh, clock here, the uh, Deco, Art Deco gates. And stuff. Well, I will say because I don't know, because some of, some of the staff coming in, and yeah. maybe just get them, I mean, just a coincidence, you know, taking that picture. So what's the one that's actually? Oh, just uh, just taking some architectural photos around London. You see, so is there a, is it against the law or is it? Um... Well, no, it's not against the law because this building, because you see, there is a um, post sign. Yeah. If there is any camera taken, you understand? Yeah. You need, uh, there is a formality. Oh, you right, understand? Okay. Because there are different um, type of uh, offices inside. Okay. You see? So we'd need uh, permission from oh, somebody. Sure, some, yeah, the building or whatever. Okay. But it's a long process, you know. I just, it's just that I, I always thought that the law was that if you're on public land, you can take anything you want. As long as you're well, I, I, would, I would just um, uh, say that before, like I've just been, just, uh, just ask me. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, yeah, thank you. Do, yeah, yeah. Okay, you see? thanks for coming out. Yeah, thank okay, you. Then. Cheers. So he's just radioing back up to his, uh, to like, the security office or something, I guess. Uh, I guess we'll get a visit from someone else. I don't know, maybe someone more senior. You alright mate? Who are you working for? Oh yeah, we're just taking a few few shots, uh, just some like, architectural stuff and street stuff around London. Yeah. Oh, so it's nothing to do with Brookfields or anything like that? No, no, no. Oh, is that no. the uh, company who owns the... Uh, well, they own the land. whole building, but oh, right, yeah. they, get a bit, they get a bit iffy when you're taking pictures of, of the structure of the building. You know? Oh right, yeah. You don't, you don't understand why. Yeah. But, um, okay. I've got a right to ask you because of the security reasons. Oh right, okay. And that's all. But, um, so what, it's for college or university or something like that? Uh, no, no, just uh, just for like personal stuff really, just, um, yeah. You'll be, you'll be quick though, won't you? You won't be too long because uh, you won't probably get the others not coming out to ask you the same thing. Or... Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, I mean, presumably we're, we're, we're all right to be here in terms of like yeah, the law sort you, of thing. Or... You, you are in the law, you're in the eyes of the law, but I'll just, you know, they already ask you the same question, you know, you get questioned again, but we just get a bit like jumpy when people are taking photos of the building, that's all. Um, you understand why? Yeah, it's yeah. All. Yeah, I can't stop you from doing it, but I've got a right to ask you, that's all. But oh, all right, okay. I just want to know, so I feel comfortable what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't right. know anyone else in other people's buildings, but yeah. that's why I had to ask you, mate. All no, that's all right, thanks for coming out, mate. Cheers. You're right, mate. Okay, so what are you doing, boss? I was just taking some photos. Yeah, you're not allowed to take. Uh, which uh, photos are you taking? Just like photos of the building. Yeah. Uh, from... But don't take our building. I mean, the other buildings, you more than welcome. But you need permission. You can't just take pictures like that. So is that is this um, public land or private land here? I mean, pri this is. Uh, I mean, the council. But from there, from this to here, you're not allowed to stand here. Oh, so like so the bit where the. Oh know, yeah. That's all right. Like from there to here. But if you need to take pictures of this building, yeah, you need to take permission from us. You can't just. Oh, like so, I have to apply for a permission. Yeah. Uh, like from the building manager or something, yeah, like, something that. like that. You all right? It's a private estate. Um, with permission to take pictures of the building. Uh, so, with permission from the estate office if you want to take some pictures of the building. Oh, it's right. Private estate here. Oh, right. So if, even if I'm on public land, like on the street, I still need a like a yeah, building manager yeah, permission yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how would I go about getting that? Like, um, would just I... inside the block number six. Okay, and the then estate office in there. So. And then that will be able to say that I can sort of stand yeah, here and shoot. Be, yeah. Okay, do I have to pay for that or? I'm not sure. Not sure, okay. So you okay. Use a private company? Is it uh, just, just, just photo, hobby, yeah, yeah. So, am I, um, what about on the other side of the road? Is that the same or? You might be okay, maybe, because you're not in estate. Okay, so the other side would be alright, but maybe not this side because yeah. of, yeah, okay, alright. Can't stop you if you're across that net. So, what about this pavement? Is that pri public? I feel or? that's public, yeah. 
public, okay. All right, thanks mate, thanks for your time. Cheers. Well, as you can see, I'm getting an awful lot of hassle. You know, these security guards are incredibly suspicious of me and they, they really talk like they've got the law on their sides. But the question is, do they? So that's a really interesting question that lots of photographers simply do not know the answers to. So we've come to our local police station where we're joined by Inspector Malcolm Graham, who also happens to be a photographic enthusiast. So Malcolm, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the million dollar question is what can we and can't we take photographs of in the UK? Pretty much you can take photographs of anything you want to. Um, certainly if you're in a public place. There are some restrictions. Uh, the Official Secrets Act prevents you from taking pictures of, uh, shall we say, military establishments um, and that sort of thing. Um, but other than that, in public place, you can do what you like. Okay, so actually very, very simple and very clear cut. Um, what can't you, just by way of common sense, what can't you, what shouldn't you take photographs of, regardless of whether you're legally entitled to or not? Everybody's worried about terrorism in this day and age um, and there are throughout the UK numerous shall we say sensitive locations um, and if you start taking pictures of those especially if you're taking detailed involved pictures of them you might find yourself coming under uh, scrutiny of the police to find out what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there are also other areas of activity uh, if you're photographing a person and you're constantly photographing that person and following them around the streets you might find that there are stalking implications here. Yeah. Um, photographing children even in public places uh, often comes under uh, scrutiny as well. Somebody will turn up and ask you what it is that you're doing. The fact is you can still take pictures of them um, but you just have to be a little bit careful about upsetting and annoying other people. Yeah. That's the biggest risk to, uh, to photographers, I think. Okay. Um, what about the use of tripods and flash guns and so forth in public places? Um, flash guns, I can't see that there's any issue with that at all, providing that you've not got them lined up so that they're firing into uh, oncoming traffic yeah. or something like that. Um, a tripod, Generally speaking, there are no additional issues with a tripod, but if you are using a tripod on a, on a crowded pavement, then you could be uh, causing an obstruction, yeah. um, and then you will be approached quite possibly for that, if you haven't already had the tripod kicked out of the way, of course. So again, it's a question of common sense, just engaging your brain, essentially. Um, are there any situations when a police officer could or should approach you? Um, Obviously when you're shooting in public, do you have the right to stop people? And if so, when does that right kick in? Basically the police won't have a right to stop you from photographing at all, um, unless you're going to be arrested for an offence, um, associated or not associated with the taking of those pictures. Um, in which case, yes, they're obviously going to stop you doing it then. Um, there are circumstances um, where if you're going to be searched under provisions of the Terrorism Act mm -hmm. that uh, your camera and, and what you are doing with that camera constitute um, evidence of the offence that you're going to be arrested for, in which case they would be seized then. But other than that, no. No. And are there any instances when a security guard, for example, could stop you? Security guards, a difficult situation because if they're in private premises, um, like a shopping centre for instance, a, a security guard will ask you to leave if they don't like you photographing, um, tell you to stop or leave, or leave the premises. They can't seize your equipment, um, they can simply exercise the, the proprietary powers of the, of the site that they're on. Um, you might not always know that you're on private premises and so just be a little bit wary of that. And is there a right way and a wrong way to react uh, when approached in public, whether it's by a police officer, a PCSO, security? Politely. Um, they may not know the law and they may think they do, um, and often they will, but they won't always. Um, if you disagree with them, disagree with them politely, ask them what authority and power they have to, to ask or demand what they're demanding. If they're simply asking, then that's a different kettle of fish. If they're demanding that you do something, ask for the authority and the power that they're doing it. And if you still disagree with them, find out who they are. Um, but I would suggest that you still comply, or otherwise it, it can just spiral. And does a police officer have the right to confiscate, take away gear, or force someone to delete uh, photographs? 
If they're arrested for the offence, then your property will be seized at that point. Mm -hmm. um, your property generally will be seized if you're arrested anyway. If it's evidence of the offence, it might be some time before you get it back. Um, but nobody's going to be deleting anything without a court order or similar. It's a quite clear cut, actually, that. OK. Um, terrorism is obviously uh, a very current concern. Um, is there, can you tell us about Section 44 of the Terrorism Act? Um, is it still current? And if, if so, what do we need to know as photographers? Section 44 um, was a, a section which uh, allowed senior officer to authorise or designate an area um, in which uh, powers to stop and search could be exercised without having any grounds. Um, anybody found in that area who the officer wanted to search could be searched. That has been repealed and is no longer in force. Yeah. Um, the only power under the, sec under the Terrorism Act is Section 43 of the Terrorism Act, where reasonable grounds to suspect certain articles are going to be found uh, must exist before search. Essentially, the searching officer has to suspect that you're a terrorist before they're going to be searching you. OK, so again, quite clear cut, quite straight down the line, OK. So is, is photography as an activity in itself enough to warrant suspicion from a police officer? Suspicion, yes. Curiosity is probably a, a, a better thing. If you're taking a photograph, you may well attract the attention of the police um, and the circumstances will dictate, in a sense, how far they're going to go with it. Um, if you're taking detailed pictures of the underside of a flyover, you might attract more attention than if you're taking uh, pictures of a, a picturesque gateway of Peterborough Cathedral, for instance. Okay. Malcolm, thank you very much indeed. So, there you have it. Tim, I hope that helps. Well, it's good to know that if I'm in a public place, I can pretty much shoot whatever I want and I shouldn't ever really have to explain what I'm doing. I think it's really important that photographers you know, know their rights inside out. That said, it's also really important for photographers to be polite and courteous. You know, in the past, they haven't always had the best reputation with the public. So, you know, anything that we can do to kind of build that reputation and, and give photography and photographers a good name, then we should go ahead and do it. In other words, you know, if you take a picture of somebody and they politely come up to you and ask you to delete it, then that's probably the right thing to do. I'm here in my hometown of Stamford in Lincolnshire and I thought I'd take a break from the office during my lunch hour to do a bit of photography. Now, I've just moved into a new house and I need some photos for the landing, so I'm going to try and shoot them in the next 60 minutes, which is going to be a real challenge. And my idea is to shoot a detail of the eight letters in the word Stamford from different places around the town and frame them up in eight different frames. Now, I want them in black and white, but I'm going to shoot them in raw, which is always in colour, so I've always got a colour version and then I can just convert them later to black and white at home. And I want all my shots in portrait orientation, so when I put the frames on the wall, they're all the same way up. Now, time's ticking, so I better get shooting. My plan was to shoot the letters methodically but it wasn't long before I went out of order and completely lost track of which ones I'd already shot. In the end, I found ticking off the letters I'd got on a piece of paper helped me to stay organised. Well, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought in the time available. I've only shot two letters and I've already used up 15 minutes of my time. And I've got to fit my lunch in too. I need to step it up a gear. It's good to work to a tight brief and a short time scale, as this keeps you really focused and helps get your camera skills razor sharp. There are literally hundreds of projects like this you could tackle, like shooting someone's name as part of a birthday card design. I stumbled across some trees in the town centre and decided to try something a bit more creative for the letter O. 
I used a slow shutter speed and a twisting motion to capture some images with radial blur. I loved the result, but when I converted it to black and white, it didn't really work. I'll keep the colour image on my hard drive, maybe it'll come in useful sometime in the future. I found these fur cones on the floor and decided to use them to make my own letter F. Lucky I did, as I didn't find another decent F anywhere. Don't be afraid to get creative at your location. Now, you don't have to find a letter on something. You could just find a shape, like a crack in the pavement or this manhole cover here, which I think looks a lot like an O, so I'm going to use this for my O in the word Stamford. Actually, a few yards down the road, I discovered a different O shape in this doorbell that ended up working even better than the manhole cover. I've got to admit, this project feels like it's doing my photography the world of good. It's so easy to write off the winter when it comes to photography. The days are short, it's cold outside. So challenges like this can really motivate you to get out there and get shooting. I'm definitely going to do this more often to keep my skills sharp. Right, I've got one more shot to go. And I've got 10 minutes left to shoot it. Easy. I spoke too soon. I can't find a decent D anywhere. With the minutes ticking away, I thought this project had beaten me and I was going to have to return to the office empty-handed. Shame there's not an H in Stamford. That would have been a good one. Suddenly, I spotted this archway, which looked just like a D on its side. I really like how this image is a bit different to the rest. Well, there's the finished set of images. I've had them all framed up, and I think they look fantastic on the wall. Well, that was a huge success. I really enjoyed it, and I loved the shots that I got. I'm challenging you to get out there and shoot a small project like the one I just shot in your hometown or local area on your lunch break. Unless, of course, you live in Llanfair, Pothgwyn, Githgol, Geris, Gwyndrobos, Llandusili or Gogogok in North Wales. In which case, give yourself another 10 minutes. Right, I better get back to the office, but I reckon I've got just enough time for lunch. Mm. I'm here in my hometown of Stamford in Lincolnshire and I thought I'd take a break from the office during my lunch hour to do a bit of photography. Now, I've just moved into a new house and I need some photos for the landing, so I'm going to try and shoot them in the next 60 minutes, which is going to be a real challenge. And my idea is to shoot a detail of the eight letters in the word Stamford from different places around the town and frame them up in eight different frames. Now, I want them in black and white, but I'm going to shoot them in raw, which is always in colour, so I've always got a colour version and then I can just convert them later to black and white at home. And I want all my shots in portrait orientation, so when I put the frames on the wall, they're all the same way up. Now, time's ticking, so I better get shooting. My plan was to shoot the letters methodically but it wasn't long before I went out of order and completely lost track of which ones I'd already shot. In the end, I found ticking off the letters I'd got on a piece of paper helped me to stay organised. Well, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought in the time available. I've only shot two letters and I've already used up 15 minutes of my time. And I've got to fit my lunch in too. I need to step it up a gear.
It's good to work to a tight brief in a short time scale, as this keeps you really focused and helps get your camera skills razor sharp. There are literally hundreds of projects like this you could tackle, like shooting someone's name as part of a birthday card design. I stumbled across some trees in the town centre and decided to try something a bit more creative for the letter O. I used a slow shutter speed and a twisting motion to capture some images with radial blur. I loved the result, but when I converted it to black and white, it didn't really work. I'll keep the colour image on my hard drive, maybe it'll come in useful sometime in the future. I found these fir cones on the floor and decided to use them to make my own letter F. Lucky I did, as I didn't find another decent F anywhere. Don't be afraid to get creative at your location. Now, you don't have to find a letter on something. You could just find a shape, like a crack in the pavement or this manhole cover here, which I think looks a lot like an O, so I'm going to use this for my O in the word Stamford. Actually, a few yards down the road, I discovered a different O shape in this doorbell that ended up working even better than the manhole cover. I've got to admit, this project feels like it's doing my photography the world of good. It's so easy to write off the winter when it comes to photography. The days are short, it's cold outside. So challenges like this can really motivate you to get out there and get shooting. I'm definitely going to do this more often to keep my skills sharp. Right, I've got one more shot to go. And I've got 10 minutes left to shoot it. Easy. I spoke too soon. I can't find a decent D anywhere. With the minutes ticking away, I thought this project had beaten me and I was going to have to return to the office empty-handed. Shame there's not an H in Stamford. That would have been a good one. Suddenly, I spotted this archway, which looked just like a D on its side. I really like how this image is a bit different to the rest. Well, there's the finished set of images. I've had them all framed up, and I think they look fantastic on the wall. Well, that was a huge success. I really enjoyed it, and I loved the shots that I got. I'm challenging you to get out there and shoot a small project like the one I just shot in your hometown or local area on your lunch break. Unless, of course, you live in Llanfair, Pothgwyn, Githgol, Geris, Quintrobos, Llandusilio, Gogogok in North Wales. In which case, give yourself another 10 minutes. Right, I better get back to the office, but I reckon I've got just enough time for lunch. Mm. Well, I hope you found that useful and informative. Okay, now let's talk about our next challenge, should you choose to accept it. I've entitled it Danger Men at Work, and what this will entail is photos of people doing their ordinary, everyday jobs. It could be men or women, obviously, and not necessarily dangerous. It could be a train driver, a taxi driver, a traffic warden, or a bill sticker. Any of these would make excellent subjects for this challenge. Obviously, at the next meeting, David will be doing a critique of our summer project. So there, in fact, won't be time to show two slideshows for this challenge and for the summer project. So what I propose doing is just to put your submissions onto the website so that you can actually view what you and others have submitted without any critiques being made at all. It'll be purely for interest without having critiques. 
if you feel like doing it, it will be fine and fun, I think. And maybe something we could do while we're in London. OK, that's it from me for this month. Look forward to seeing you on the 31st of August at the London trip.